Hi, and welcome to our last section of Chapter 5 on probability. We're going to talk about conditional probability and independence, uh, quite and also dependence. Quite a bit of material to cover, uh, so let's get started. There are five things that we want to talk about today. Uh, what is conditional probability? Uh, conditional probability and independence. We'll talk about tree diagrams and the multiplication rule. Talk about independence, dependence, uh, and a special multiplication rule. And then we're going to calculate conditional probabilities, which we've already sort of done uh, with relative frequencies, marginal frequencies, and conditional frequencies. All right, so conditional probability is the probability that one event happens given that another event has already happened. Uh, so suppose we know that event A has happened, then the probability that B happens given that A happened is the probability of B given A. So for example, um, if it rained this morning, then what's the probability that the quad is wet at 11 a.m.? So it would be the probability of B, which is uh, the quad is wet at 11 a.m., given that it rained this morning. And so that probability is going to be different than if it didn't rain. Because if it didn't rain, then it's unlikely that the quad is going to be wet unless someone took a hose and sprayed it around 11 o'clock on the quad. So it's more likely that the quad is going to be wet if we have a rainy day than it is if we don't. So we talk about conditional probability in order to frame other probabilities in the context of something else that previously happened. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at, uh, I think we used this example before. This is a table that shows a survey of uh, male and female students and then uh, whether or not they had pierced ears or not. And so we're going to say that event A is being a male and event B is having pierced ears. So uh, first we find, what is a, you can work along with me, what is the probability uh, of event A, given the total number of uh, subjects in this survey, what is the probability of B, what's the probability of A and B happening, and what's the probability of A or B happening? All right, so let's see if you can figure out these values. I'm going to show you the answers. Okay, so the probability of A is I have 90 males over the total amount is 178. The probability that someone has pierced ears is 103. Out of 178, the probability of having a male with pierced ears is going to be 19 out of 178, and the probability of A or B, either a male, so 1971, or pierced ears plus 84, there are only four subjects who don't meet that criteria, so uh, females who don't have pierced ears. So the probability of A or B is 174 out of 178. All right, so now let's uh, talk about conditional probability now that we had that quick warm up. So the probability of A given B is the probability that the subject is a male given that the subject had pierced ears. And secondly, we can flip A and B, the probability that the subject has pierced ears given that the subject is a male. All right, so let's see if you can answer these questions. <coughs> All right, <clears throat> so the probability of A given B <clears throat> um, is going to be uh, the probability that they're male given that they have pierced ears. So I have 103 pierced ears, so that's given. I have 19 out of uh, 103. Second, probability that the person has pierced ears given the subject is a male. I have 19 males with pierced ears out of a total of 90. <clears throat> So the probability is 19 out of 90. So you can see how these probabilities change depending on how the question is framed and what's given, or what has happened uh, prior to the calculation for a given event. All right, so this brings us to our first homework problem, 5.1.3. Skipping ahead, 5.1, sorry, 5.3.1. <clears throat> Uh, so below is a list of grades for local college by school. So I have liberal arts, engineering, and physical sciences, health and human services. 
where engineering and physical sciences is event E, and event L is a grade below a B. Okay, so I have A, B, and C, three counts. So I want to find the probability uh, that a student is in the engineering and physical science school, and write this out in plain English, uh, find the probability of E given L and L given E, and write out uh, these probabilities in plain English as well. So that's, I'm going to leave this up, and uh, you can copy this down while I move on to our next topic of discussion. All right, so second we're going to talk about conditional probability and independence. <clears throat> uh, so we said independent events are events which the occurrence or probability of one has no impact on the occurrence or probability of another. So, for example, the probability that it will rain today and the probability that the San Francisco Giants will win the World Series are independent events, meaning they don't influence each other. So, uh, regardless of whether it rains today, it has no impact on whether the Giants will win the World Series, and if they do or do not, it has no impact on whether it will rain today. All right, so we can <clears throat> write, then, if the events are independent, the probability of A given B is just the probability of A, because it doesn't matter if B has happened or not. The probability of A is independent of uh, event B. So the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A, and the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of B. And this isn't the case when the events are dependent. But when they're independent, these two equations are true. Okay, so below is a result of a survey of AP STAT students, their gender and their dominant hand. So event A is a male student, event B is a left-handed student. So we want to find out if these events are mutually exclusive, meaning are they independent. All right, so what we want to do is to find out if the probability of A given B is the probability of A. All right, so going back to this equation, if these two equations hold true, then the two events are independent. So mutually exclusive is another way to say that they're independent. <clears throat> all right, so are these events mutually exclusive? Let's calculate all the probabilities. The probability of A is 20 out of 50. The probability of A given B is 3 out of 7. This does not equal the probability of A. So <clears throat> these are not uh, independent events. These are not mutually exclusive events. Similarly, we can look at the probability of B. The probability of B is 7 over 50. When compared to the probability of B given A, it's 3 out of 20, which means that if <clears throat> uh, A occurs first, then B is going to be uh, less likely than if A does not occur, if I got that correct. Uh, so the, the event of A, yes or no, that it happens or doesn't happen, will influence the outcome of B. So therefore, we say that the uh, events A and B are not mutually exclusive or they're not independent. All right, so this brings us to homework 5.3.2. All right, so let's, we're going to take a look at allergies and al uh, no allergies uh, by uh, gender. <coughs> and we're going to ask, are these uh, events A and B independent? So please take a moment to write this down. And I'm going to move on. Okay, third topic. We're move, moving right along. Uh, tree diagrams and the multiplication rule. All right, so below is a sample space of tossing a coin twice. We have two possible outcomes, uh, heads and tails. So H is the heads and T is the tails. <clears throat> and so this tree diagram tells you what the probability is of rolling a heads on the first toss and then on the second toss. So it's a half or 50% for each uh, toss for both heads and tails. And so we want to figure out what the probability of two heads is. We follow this tree diagram. <clears throat> probability of heads is one half times the probability of another heads is another half. And so we're going to multiply the two probabilities together. One half times one half is equal to one fourth. So this is using the tree diagram and the multiplication rule. All right, so we're going to use a table to create a tree diagram, and then we're going to define the probability that we pick two students with a given dominant hand in order. 
All right, so here's the, I have the total number of subjects is uh, 28, so 21 plus 7 is 28, so 28 subjects here. And then uh, this is left and um, All right, so um, if we pick a student uh, out of the 28, the possibility that they'll be left-handed would be 4 out of 28. Now, if we pick that one student, we take them out of the pool. So now we have 27 students left. So in order, we'd have to pick two students with the left hand. The first would be 4 out of 28. Now there are 27 students left and three that are left-handed. So then in this case, this probability would be 3 out of 27. There are still 24 right-handed students left after we pick the first left-handed student, but there are only 27 students left, so it would be 24 out of 27. All right, so we have a table here, and um, if we add up these values, I have 4, 24, 7, and 21. <clears throat> All right, so the total, uh, total population here is 28. And so <clears throat> I have right-handed 24 and left-handed 4. So the probability of picking a left-handed person first is 4 out of 28. Now I've eliminated 1 out of the total, right? So uh, 1 left-handed out of the total. I have 3 left, but I still have 24 here. This is 27. So the probability I'm going to pick a left-handed person again is 3 out of 27. Probability that I pick a right-handed person is still 24, so I still have 24 people left in the pool. So we can use this table in the tree di uh, diagram to determine the probability of picking two students with a given dominant hand in order. All right, so we can uh, figure out all the probabilities, probably of left, 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 right, 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 left. And so we're multiplying these probabilities together. 4 28ths times 3 27 4 28 times 24 27 So left, 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 right. 24 28 times 4 27 all right, because I still have those four left-handed people left, but the denominator of the number of people has changed. And then 24 28 times 23 27 And you should end up with these probabilities, and the total should equal 1. All right, so that's how the probability uh, setup looks like using a, a conditional probability and a tree diagram. All right, so the general multiplication rule for independent events is we have the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A, right? So probability of A happens, the probability of B given A uh, is what you would multiply this by, right? So this is the probability of left-handed, and this is the probability of left-handed given the left-handed has already occurred. All right. <clears throat> so let's go back and take a look at um, our rule. Probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B given that A has happened. If the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of B, where the events are independent, then we can just say the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. Okay. So that's your general multiplication rule. It's really this one, but it turns into this one with independent events because these two probabilities are the same. So we just replace the probability of B for the probability of B given A when they're independent events. So where these are independent events, then we can switch this rule. When they're not independent, then we have to stick with this rule. Okay, so let's move on. All right, so independent events. Again, if two events, probability of X and Y, are independent, and the probability of them both happening is the probability of X times the probability of Y. And we saw that with the tree diagram. So, for example, the probability that it will rain today is the probability of R. It's 0.25, and the probability that the Giants will win the World Series is 0 0.04. So then the probability that it rains today and the San Francisco Giants win is 0.25 times 0 0.04 or 0 0.01 because these events are independent. All right, this brings us to homework 5.3.3. I'm going to let you copy this down and we're going to move on from this video. 
Okay, so a recent study showed 93% of teenagers use the internet and 60% of online teens, so teens who use the internet, have posted a profile on a social networking site. Use a tree diagram to identify all of the possible outcomes. So I'm going to leave this up here for a moment, and then uh, you're going to do the problem. You can pause here uh, because this video is ending.